I was 14 years old, and I had been just through confirmation class in a Lutheran tradition where I grew up. So we did not partake or participate in communion as children growing up. But it was just like in the Catholic tradition, first communion, there was preparation for that before you participate in communion to get an understanding, what is this about? So in my own tradition, confirmation classes was preparation. And then the big Sunday, Confirmation Sunday came, and that was always Palm Sunday for us. And then we had this habit, this tradition of every boy wears a heavy cloak. It was a traditional dress and a fedora hat. And that felt like totally wrong to me. But it was one of those traditions. And every girl wore their specific hand-embroidered traditional Transylvanian dresses. And it was a very special uh, occasion, but I felt with that cloak the weight of the centuries on my shoulders. And then we came up to the rail, we knelt down and were served individually communion. That's how I grew up and how I experienced communion as this one-on-one, -on -one, very personal, kneeling, sacred experience and a little bit out-of-place experience when I think back. Now, uh, after we moved to Germany, communion was very differently. We came just by groups around, around gathered around the communion table and it was actually all around the communion table. You see the community coming together. We received bread and we dipped it in the cup and partook of it. And then we held hands, shaking hands, with the words like, the living Christ may strengthen and sustain you to eternal life. A very different experience. And then, if you know the Catholic tradition, Mass, every single Sunday, it's part of uh, the Lutheran tradition too. And in the more Reformed background, as I've experienced it also in Germany, and years ago it happened here at St. Paul's Communion, was like three times per year, maybe four times per year. And before it became four times per year, there was this, quite a conversation in a church council or in the consistory, as it was called then. Should we, should we not? What are the reasons? And it was because, in my understanding, it was so special, such an important event that they didn't want to kind of water it down. At the same time, in the Catholic tradition, and I've been in a Benedictine monastery participating there in spiritual retreats, mass every single day, not every week, every single day, the daily bread, the daily nurturing, the daily being set free, being drawn into what the presence of the living Christ. So here, some very interesting experiences of communion. And then, my wife and I, we moved to Virginia. And we had no idea what these small glasses were. They were passed in the pews, and we held on and we looked to the left, we looked to the right. And then the pastor said, this is the cup, and we guess what it reminded us of? Exactly like at a bar, sitting there, everyone. 
it was kind of getting used to a very new way and having very different associations with it. So just as the different loaves of bread and the different ways to serve communion, uh, there are different ways to serve and experience communion, but there is something that is common to all communion. What are those key elements? What is in common to communion in Transylvania with the heavy coat? What is in common with communion when you kneel at the altar rail? What does that communion have in common with gathering around the table with intinction or with individual cups? What does all communion in its various forms have in common? One thing is thanksgiving. It's called Eucharist in the New Testament. And you hear the Eucharist still in Lutheran tradition, in Episcopal tradition. And it goes back to the Greek word of thanksgiving. Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, this Eucharist. He gave thanks. So think of every communion. It's like a small thanksgiving. Makes sense. Thanksgiving. God's or Jesus' smorgasbord for us. <laughs> now, sometimes I wonder how this small wafer, this small thing uh, can connect me or remind me of smorgasbord. Well, that's why we need this meat and eat, this chili. And once a year, the variety of it to remember it's a feast. And that's what it was connected, like actually in the early church, what the Church of the Brethren still does as a love feast or an agape meal, it's kind of at the beginning when we listen closely to, to the words of Jesus. During the meal, while they were eating, Jesus took the cup. So it was a meal while they were eating. The feast, imagine Thanksgiving feast. Passover feast. And together with Passover, the old, the Hebrew scripture part, what we call Old Testament, experience of being shackled, being slaves in Egypt, and then being set free, being set free. Wow. And there is this tradition of communion as appetizer. You know, you go to a restaurant, you get the appetizer, and then you prepare for the meal. Appetizer for the heavenly banquet. And that's how Jesus describes the banquet communion in heaven. It's a banquet. It's joy. It's a delight where food is served with love where you belong, where you are part of God's family, no matter who you are or where you're on life's journey. Another part that is key to all communions is Jesus Christ and his love. There is something in communion that Paul describes in uh, the letter to the Philippians where we have just heard that Jesus from the distance, from the other realm, from mystery, from heaven, from however we understand that comes down to become real human like you and me, embodied, real, as bread, as tangible, as close by. And communion is connected with Jesus' self-giving love. It's the self-giving. It is my lifeblood for you. It's my love given for you. It's the self-giving, sacrificing, like the meal that is served with love. Jesus' self-giving nature. 
There's an old Christian icon depiction of a pelican taking care of its little birds in the nest. The pelican not having enough food opens up its chest and the little pelican chicks are being fed by the blood of the pelican. Now, I don't take that literally and I think one of our problems with scriptures is when we take it all too literally. The meaning is that we're fed the self-giving mother love of Jesus that he imparts and shares with those who gather around the feast. So being a baby bird in a nest, that's sometimes how my soul feels. Hungry, longing for food, longing to be refreshed longing to belong, longing to be set free. Communion. What is its significance, its meaning for you?